really couldn't imagine because I have been the team's biggest skeptic. I was kind of prepared of finding just a stone. For me, it has been an amazing experience, I must say. The team were completely dwarfed by the mysterious object, which is about 60 meters in diameter and lying almost 80 meters down on the bottom of the Baltic Sea. There are visible formations on top of the object which are set at a 90 degree angle and look like passageways or walls, as well as something that looks like it could be a staircase. The Baltic Sea Anomaly is an anomaly in the best sense of the term. It is a 70 meter long object, with numerous sharp edges and right angles prevalent throughout its structure, with a set of stairs on one side, as if deployed from its shape and left to ruin. Sonar has also found drag marks behind the object, samples have confirmed it is made of metal, geologist Steve Weiner said that according to his tests, the object was not a geological formation, suggesting that the structure was in fact made from metals which nature could not reproduce itself. Electrical equipment also has mysterious issues when near to the anomaly. Professional diver. Stefan Hadjaborn, part of the Ocean X team said, anything electric out there, and the satellite phone as well, stopped working when we were above the object, then when we got away about 200 meters, it turned on again. Lindbergh isn't convinced that the object is actually an ET spacecraft. In response to one question about what the object might be, Lindbergh responded, I think it is very odd in its shape. It is tough to give an explanation as to what it might be exactly, since different scientists have many different theories. Whatever it is, it is something we do not usually find in nature. Sitting in the dark cold depths of the Baltic Sea, it is thought to be over 140,000 years old. Ocean X is currently investigating the object, I will keep you updated. The Sea of Galilee Although not a real sea, it has remained named as such due to the staunch traditions, mainly religious which have grown and flourished from around its shores. The first century historian, Flavius Josephus for example, was so impressed by the areas surrounding the Sea of Galilee, he once wrote, 
quote, One may call this place the ambition of nature. Reporting a thriving fishing industry around the lake, with well over 200 boats regularly working the waters, archaeologists have since discovered only one such fishing vessel, found in 1986. It has been nicknamed the Jesus Boat. According to Christian religion, much of the ministry of Jesus Christ himself actually occurred upon the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and a recent discovery within the waters themselves has continued to perplex specialists within the area, astounding all who have been exploring said discovery, and weighs an estimated 60,000 tons according to researchers, an astonishing size making it much heavier than any of our modern day warships. Rising nearly 32 feet out of the ancient sea's sediment, it also has a diameter of about 230 feet. Stonehenge, for example, which is an impressive ancient structure in its own right, has an outer stone circle diameter of only half that. First discovered in 2003 using sonar exploration of the southwest portion of the sea, divers have since been down to investigate the presumably ancient structure, writing regarding their finds within the latest issue of International Journal of Nautical Archaeology. Researcher Yitzhak Paz, Antiquities Authority, and Ben Gurion University believes it could date back more than 4,000 years. Quote, the more logical possibility is that it belongs to the 3rd millennium BC, because there are other megalithic phenomena from that time that are found close by, Paz told LiveScience.com in an interview, noting that those sites are associated with fortified settlements. Could it be that this is where the peoples of Bet Yura buried and honored their dead? Is this a proverbial city of the dead, or something else entirely? As more research is undertaken, it is only a matter of time before we understand this amazing structure for what it truly once was. We will of course keep you posted. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. In 1996, Italian mineralogist Vincenzo Di Michele spotted an unusual yellow-green gem within one of Tutankhamun's necklaces. The jewel was tested and found to be made of a type of glass known as Libyan desert glass. The interesting thing regarding this, however, is its origins. To this day, no one seems to be able to explain how it formed. No trace of a crater has ever been discovered. An ancient meteorite, or indeed outer space object, scorching across the skies of Egypt is the basis for many religious teachings within this once amazing ancient civilization. They associated the objects and the flaming tails during such events with that of a phoenix, and the collected items, presumably nearly always meteorites, were then hammered down into wares. Nine small beads, stored at the University College London's Petrie Museum, dated to around 3200 BC, were found in necklaces along with exotic terrestrial minerals such as lapis lazuli, agate, and gold. They are some of the earliest iron artifacts ever found, and archaeologists have confirmed that they came from outer space. Meteoric iron is much harder and more brittle than copper. Quote, they were rolled and hammered into shape. This is a very different technology from the usual stone bead drilling and shows quite an advanced understanding, showing the metalsmiths knew exactly how to work this rather difficult material," said Thilo Rarin, a University College London professor of archaeology. When American geophysicist John Wasson was consulted regarding King Tut's strange gem, he curiously linked the event with one within an extremely remote forest of Siberia, an event we have covered before. Quote, when the thought came to me that this required a hot sky, I thought immediately of the Tunguska event, he told Horizon. In 1908, a massive explosion flattened 80 million trees in Tunguska, Siberia. And whatever landed there over a century ago is still there, and it kills any living organism which settles above it. And what is most interesting surrounding all of this is the ancient Egyptian accounts of what they did with a rather peculiar, rather special type of object that was, at one point, retrieved from the glassy sands of Libya. A particularly different object, which they called a phoenix egg. That hieroglyph state was secreted away within a secret chamber deep within the Great Pyramid. We have covered before the hypothesis that these stories etched in hieroglyphics may be far older than the Egyptian culture which may have preceded it. 
Yet, the question is clear. What could this phoenix egg be? Guatemala, littered with ancient wonders, temples, which pierce its dense canopy, all once declared as separate structures. Modern technology, however, has shown that these structures, mostly now submerged by dense undergrowth, was once one huge mega-metropolis, with Tikal in particular also once containing a plaque displaying a great deluge, with the site submerged in what is depicted as a cataclysm, with a volcanic eruption also in the background of said image. With mysterious megaliths still found littering the foliage, one site in particular, it would seem, evaded destruction, and the subsequent rainforest's creeping grip which has consumed much of this enormous ancient site. Known as Kirigua, it remains virtually untouched, yet the most intriguing thing regarding this site, apart from its superb preservation, are the enigmatic stone carvings not only found at the site, but throughout the jungle itself. Statues and megaliths, presumably often depicting queens and kings in strained contraptions, seemingly familiar in form to modern vehicles or the interiors of an aircraft. Once claimed as mere signposts, the sheer abundance of these mystifying tributes, however, now makes this explanation unlikely. For even if merely artistically inspired, what do they depict? Why would an ancient civilization show such passion in casting these particular-looking technological devices into massive stones all over the Guatemala rainforest? With Kirigua thankfully so well preserved, we can explore a number of these baffling carved megaliths in detail. Were they trying to tell future generations something? Did they find something crashed within the forest, possibly documenting a find and proposed purposes upon these stones? Did they witness a form of craft take to the air and seemingly into the heavens? Could this have been the inspiration for why leaders of these tribes would want to be immortalized in carved, similar-appearing machines, in the hope of eternal life or indeed a craft capable of transporting them into the heavens? Vast questions still surround this ancient civilization's knowledge, one now known to have been over 10 million strong. Did this enormous, once incredibly powerful ancient civilization get visited by beings from another planet? Possibly found a crashed craft? One they attempted to depict a reverse engineering of? The fact that many depict what modern man would perceive as complex craft concepts, many find highly intriguing. We also find these massive stone megaliths, the efforts undoubtedly applied to create them, their source inspiration, and indeed the images they depict, by a civilization we now know were undeniably advanced and extremely ancient, once lost for millennia and only now being rediscovered highly compelling. Uh, I really couldn't imagine because I have been the team's biggest skeptic. I was kind of prepared of finding just a stone. For me, it has been an amazing experience, I must say. <laughs>